welcome to this Plant Factory tutorial. In this video, you will learn how to add vertex colors to your model. Plant Factory uses vertex colors to store different pieces of information from the plant graph as data in the mesh. All this data is related to various material and texturing effects, and it can be used to recreate procedural material changes in other applications. By using the red, green, blue and alpha channels, you can store up to four separate pieces of information for each vertex. One group of RGBA values is called a vertex color set, and a mesh can contain multiple vertex color sets so that you can store even more data than just a single RGBA color. Up to eight sets are currently supported. Because colors are assigned to each vertex on the plant, the final plant mesh needs to be computed before you can add vertex colors to it, which is why vertex colors are a post-processing effect. There is a new post-processing panel, and the panel is now a part of the default workspace. If you are using your own workspace, you can show the panel by checking it in the display options and then docking it anywhere you want. First, select the channel in which you want to store the information, and then select which piece of information to store. As long as there are unused channels available in a set, you can store further data in the other channels. It doesn't matter in which channel you put which piece of information, as long as you remember after export which data was put where. Once a vertex set has been created and at least one color channel has been filled with data, you can view the vertex colors in the 3D view by selecting the corresponding set and then the channel you want to view in the display mode menu. Let's check the red channel where I added the material blending property. This creates a mask for blending between materials in transition areas, for example between trunks and branches. Previously this blending effect was only available when rendering the plant inside view or plant factory, but with this mask you can now recreate this effect in any other render engine. The mask can be adjusted with the blend materials and move away settings in the blending group on the child tab. In release 2023, this is supported for standard blending and masks for subdivision surface blending will be added in the future. Let's add a second vertex set to the plant and this time we'll select RGB and then the leaf color shift with HLS. This will store random color variations from the leaf nodes for each leaf. Because we are storing three data properties at once, namely U variation, luminosity variation and saturation variation, we are occupying both red, green and blue channels at the same time. So this option is only available when choosing RGB as the channel. Let's switch the display mode to the new set. Here we have one of those cases where we are not interested in the final color, but in the data of the individual channels. The red channel contains the U shift, the green channel the lightness shift, and the blue channel the saturation shift. You can adjust the values using the color shift parameters in the leaf node. Usually you would only use very small randomness values to get just a slight color variation across all leaves, but I'll exaggerate this here so that we can clearly see the changes in the viewport. Remember that Plant Factory does not save the final color of the adjusted material, but only the color correction values of these three sliders. In your target application, you would then use the R, G and B channels of the vertex color set and plug them into a color correction node to recreate these variations. Now, if you want to save the actual material color of the texture geometry at each vertex, select the material color property. This will retrieve the color of the material applied to the mesh and write its color into each vertex. Because we are talking about full color information, this option will also occupy three channels and is only available in RGB mode. Here's what the plant looks like textured. And here it is with the simplified vertex color version. Again, the color detail depends strongly on the mesh resolution. And when I increase the resolution, the colors saved into the mesh start to represent the original texture more faithfully. You can use this option to recreate a procedural material without having to bake it into texture maps upon export, for example. If you are using leaf nodes, keep in mind that these are too low in resolution to faithfully represent color changes. So leaf nodes are kind of an exception because they only use one average color and they pick the color where the hooking point is located on the texture. Finally, the last option is the most interesting one, ambient occlusion. With this feature, you can pre-bake ambient occlusion into the model for improved lighting, especially in real-time projects. I will add it to the alpha channel. You can preview ambient occlusion in its own separate display mode or as part of the vertex color set, whatever you might prefer. 
Computing AO can take a while depending on the geometry complexity and is computationally quite demanding. Once the AO has been computed, new controls become available for adjusting the look. The min and max sliders set the darkest and brightest value of the AO. The brightness slider adjusts the overall brightness while keeping the ratio between brightest and darkest values intact. Falloff controls how smooth the transitions between bright and dark areas are, so it's basically the softness of the AO look. You can also artificially darken the base of the plant by activating ground influence. Strength controls the darkening intensity, height defines how high the darkening extends, and transition is once again a smooth blend between the dark base and the rest of the AO lighting. To use the AO effect in your target application, you would multiply the diffuse texture map of each material by the ambient occlusion value. You can also disable background computation of AO with every geometry update in the mesh preview options. In this case, AO will only be recomputed after a mesh has changed when you switch to the AO or vertex color viewport modes. Once you've set up all vertex sets you need, just check export vertex colors in the geometry export settings. Vertex color export is available for Alembic, FBX and USD. Everything we just discussed is also available in all Plant Factory integration plugins and in Plant Catalog Exporter so that you can edit and preview vertex colors of already exported procedural plants at any time. To learn how to use the exported vertex colors in the material node graphs of your target application, check out the blog post in the video description. Thanks for watching and see you in the next tutorial. Music